Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday of the 31st week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And on upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it. And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. And just the same way, I tell you there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Here we have in the 15th chapter of Luke's Gospel, basically three parables of lost. And today we've just covered two of the three. The first one, of course, is the parable of the lost sheep. The second one is the parable of the lost coin. And the third is, is the parable of the lost son. Now, I think it's important for us as we look at the parables here in this passage uh, to realize that each one of these issues of being lost involves something a little bit different. The first one involves a sheep. And you, you may have heard me talk about this before, but one of the things that we know about sheep is that sheep are not very smart. <clears throat> in fact, they're quite dumb. They're one of the dumbest animals. And so they need constant care. And it's very common for a sheep to just wander away from the flock. And so a shepherd has to always be vigilant to look and make sure that all of his sheep are in one place. Because if a sheep wanders off, that sheep, of course, very valuable to the shepherd, can become just prey for uh, someone who is looking for a sheep to devour. And so Here he talks about uh, somebody that is lost carelessly. That's the way that sheep are. They just kind of wander off. And then the second one, the lost coin, is kind of intriguing. A woman has 10 coins and loses one. Now, what's the significance of this? Well, back in the days of Jesus, it was very common for a woman to be given a wedding necklace of 10 coins. This necklace, these coins, were basically kind of like her uh, guarantee that if anything were to happen to her husband, that she would have something to live on, at least for the time being. And so those coins were very important. They stood for the care that her husband would have for her, even if he were to pass. The other thing about those coins and that necklace is that that necklace and the keeping of the 10 coins was a sign of her fidelity to her husband. So if she happens to be missing a coin, it could be illustrative or illustrative rather of the fact that she may have kind of, you know, cashed one in and used it for whatever she wanted rather than for its intended purpose, which was to keep and care for her after the death of her husband. It was a sign of infidelity at that point. And so this woman looked for this coin, very, very motivated to find it. So here in the area of being lost, we have something that was lost accidentally. She just 
could not find it. it. It somehow dropped off the necklace. And so obviously she wanted to keep looking and looking and looking and looking for it. And when she found it, how wonderful is that? The parable of the lost son that we usually call the prodigal son is one that, uh, for all intents and purposes, is someone who was lost intentionally. They have chosen to follow a different path and to leave the father. So they're lost intentionally. And these three parables, and as we look at the two that we especially have covered, we have to remember that here Jesus is talking about the sinners that were in his presence and the care, the desire that God has for all to be found again. And so he's using this before the scribes and Pharisees to explain the heart of God for those who are lost from God's heart. There are those who have been lost from God's heart carelessly. They just kind of wandered off. In fact, one of the things that I talk about a lot with individuals, if I'm going through some counseling with them and they've kind of lost their, their fire for the Lord, is that it's very easy. But most people don't just go way off all at once. That does happen. There are those who have made a deliberate choice and boy, they're gone. Many times, however, lostness is something that takes place just very gradually. We just don't realize it's happening. We keep getting farther and farther and farther and farther away from our Lord. I think that we are kind of living this out in the pandemic where more and more people are uh, finding it very comforting, comfortable rather, uh, not to go to Mass. It's not comforting, but it is comfortable. It's a lot easier not to go or to go to Mass with a cup of coffee sitting in your living room instead of getting up and going to Mass and receiving God's grace. Now, for those who really are at risk, don't go. But our, I know uh, Bishop Johnston has been indicating a desire for all of us to be invited back to Mass and recognize that if we are safe to go, it's a great place to be. And we have to be careful that we don't just carelessly move farther and farther away from our Lord. The second one that's here is lost accidentally. And this is where someone just all of a sudden picks up on the scent or the rabbit trail of something else that draws them away from Christ. And it's very easy for us to get lost in maybe uh, a unique uh, teaching or something from someone in the world that kind of has us really enamored with what they're saying. And what we don't realize is that as we follow some of these teachings that we find on the Internet or uh, with other people that we know or through social media, there's so many ways that we can be accidentally drawn away by, by being lured into looking at things other than Jesus. And the next thing you know, we're lost. We're away from him. And so both cases, both those who are carelessly lost and those who are accidentally lost, the thing that Jesus wants to get across is how much God desires to have us come back, to be found, to be brought into that place of being again in relationship with him. How good it is that not only is God in the, the uh basically the inclination to receive us back, but has given us great ways to come back into the church through confession and just through the restoration of our heart through the sacraments. And again, when that which is lost, the one who is lost is found, there is great rejoicing, not only by God, but by the angels. In other words, it's heaven's rejoice that again lets us know how important it is that we follow after him and that when those who are lost are found, heaven rejoices even more. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it's always good to be with you uh, for these video podcasts, and I look forward again tomorrow to being with you, the Lord willing on day by day. 
So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.